Welcome back to You and Your Money. I'm happy to have with me today uh, folks from the Inland Revenue Department, Roger Forbes, Sandra Strawn, and Ralph Monroe. When we went into the break, we were talking um, about one of the uh, newest um, benefits, uh, one of the newest services that you have introduced um, for businesses, and that is the uh, ability to go online and apply for your business license or to have that renewed, which is a great thing for, for people in business and so a lot of folks are happy to hear that. But you're also uh, here today to talk about a waiver on the surcharge on real property tax. And whenever you say real property tax, I think probably the only thing that's, that's trumped that <laughs> when it comes to concerning members of the public is that. But real property tax is, is a concern. But tell us a little bit about this um, waiver um, and how it works and who, who it applies to. Um, I'll take the first shot at it. Basically, what happens is that there is a surcharge or interest that applies to the outstanding balance on one real property tax account, right? And that is done on an annual basis. Now, <clears throat> until 31st of December this year, that is 31st December 2015, persons who have owner-occupied property or residential property are able to apply to be exempt from the surcharge or the interest as some prefer to refer to it. And they have to come in, make an agreement with the chief valuation officer. There is a period for repayment of up to seven years. Mm -hmm. Of course, the time allotted and agreed upon will determine uh, the amount outstanding and so forth and kind so like forth. When you right. get a loan at the bank. Precisely, okay. right. right. And uh, so we are encouraging persons to take advantage of this opportunity. One thing I need to emphasize is that if the property under agreement is sold prior to the fulfill, well under agreement is sold, then the tax and the arrears plus the surcharge becomes due and payable. Now, a lot of people um, are, are very apprehensive and fearful when you start talking about real property tax, because it's probably one of those taxes that people either outright ignore or just don't pay for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if I'm watching this show, I'm a homeowner, I know that my real property tax is in arrears, um, what do I need to do, what do I need to bring in order to, to come in and to receive this, um, this exemption? They need to come in and they will need to uh, show that they qualify for the exemption that they are owner occupied or it's a residential property. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have records in our office as well and they will need to enter into the agreement. So it's not a cumbersome exercise. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is to the office on the right. I just want to add, if I may. Um, Residential properties, that's a new classification of properties. Um, prior to July 1, we had three classes, vacant land, owner-occupied, or commercial. Now, those persons, and there are lots of persons that have duplexes, triplexes, and they were treated as commercial properties in the past, so the tax <coughs> rates were pretty high. Well, higher. Okay. Now we have the residential category. There's a lower tax rate, and those persons that own residential properties also qualify for the waiver of surcharges. Now the catch, oh, I shouldn't say the catch, but one thing they have to do, the deductions must be by standing order or through salary deduction. So that's kind of the thing we want. We want to ensure that the payments are received on time, consistently, mm -hmm. each month. So you have to set up with the bank to, to have you with your bank or your pay or, or your, 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 your right, um, right. Well, that's good because people do salary deductions go for all kinds of right. other things. And the salary mm -hmm. deduction is, is um, something that public officers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, utilize and so it's a great benefit to civil servants. Now, one thing I noticed is that there, um, you're putting a lot of, there's a, there are a lot of things going in place um, to assist with the collection of government revenue. And, and why, uh, there seems to be, not seems to be, but there certainly is a thrust and a move and a push to collect those outstanding um, um, revenues. And I wanted to know or get a sense of what's been sort of the public reaction and how have people responded to all of this? Well, I found, um, Mr. Sawyer, that the Bahamian public, for the most part, are very compliant. 
if you would go after your money, you would find out that there's not much difficulty. Um, a number of persons have come into the department and they've made the necessary arrangement over the last few months to settle their debt. Um, I think for the most part, um, we were a bit negligent as a department in not going to recoup the people's money. Um, but I want to encourage the public to continue doing what they're doing because it is their money. It's not our money. It's the public's money that we're trying to collect. And I believe that in the long run, um, the kind of arrest that we presently have, that will all be um, phased away. Some people are just very fearful though, of coming in and, and facing into that debt. You know, you bought a home, you never paid real property tax, you never paid, you know, so many other taxes. You're just starting this business. You know, do you know you're afraid of what is going to what's going to happen if you if you you know if you do um, charge VAT, etc. But how do you sort of alleviate those fears and, and make it um, an easier exercise for people to come in? All we ask them to simply do is acknowledge their taxes coming. We, your people, we, your servants, we, the Hamans and we are part of the same society. The monies that we collect is literally monies that is owed to yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we're saying, if you're in business, that's part of doing business. Just come in, we've got the records, let's sit down, let's talk and see how we're gonna settle the debt. Um, are there any other measures that are, that are coming in, in, in place or anything else that's coming on stream that is going to assist um, in the further collection of outstanding revenues or, or taxes that uh, people are not paying? Well, certainly, uh, one of the areas that we really would like to underscore is the matter of the tax compliance certificate, mm -hmm. right? Now, if someone is making a tender for a government contract or making, receiving payment under contract or receiving some concession under law whereby concession is given, then they need to apply for tax compliance certificate, right? Now, this is whereby government agencies are talking more and more to each other. And so you need, based on under the amended law, there are several laws or legislation that applies. The real property tax, the business license, the National Insurance Act, the Customs Management Act, you have the Immigration Act, and the Road Traffic Act. Wow. So persons need to be in compliance with these act and the, and the agencies that uh, have carriage of these act. That, of course, is a whole um, longer discussion. We're going to uh, take a break at this point, but certainly mm -hmm. we're going to pick up that discussion right after this. Stay with us. You and your money continues.